In this episode, we escape the wildfire smoke of eastern Washington and head out to the Lolo National Forest in western Montana to look for pre-Cambrian era trilobite fossils. This location is not too far from the Fish Trap Creek, and it's between Thompson Falls and Libby, Montana. The material we're working in the hillside is of the Cambrian Gordon Shale Formation, and it has uh, brachiopods along with the trilobites, so that's pretty cool. And uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, please uh, consider subscribing for more content, and be sure to check out the description box below for more detailed content. So uh, with that said, let's get right into this. But like I already found something. Let's see some trilobite parts. Oh, hey. That's a good one right there. The half one? Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one I found. And you can see all of this that people have been working out of the hillside here. And on the road up, there was plenty of other uh, road cuts that had shale that could be investigated along with who knows what is out, out here. This is a big wide open area. Um, we took the road from Thompson Falls north up to here as opposed to going from Libby south and the roads were good. I know there's uh, conflicting info. Um, I didn't bring anything to wrap these. It is kind of a fragile material. Uh, you can just see. So uh, you're gonna want some newspaper, probably wrap them in paper towels. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. I mean, start uh, picking them up and uh, poke through them, split them with a butter knife. And that's about that, that's all it takes. Uh, we wanna find some good ones though. This is quite the drive, quite the trek for us. Like is testing out her leash length. It's funny. I have no clue. We're taking it though. It's awesome. I think the green stuff right over here seems like it's got a lot of little impressions in it, but it's really already split. So each piece you like split maybe once, like someone already really went hmm. through it. I'm going to keep working some of this and poking around. I wasn't expecting it to be as wet as it is. I mean, I know it's uh, mid-September, but still, like, it's all of this shale's holding so much water, like, you can just, like, feel the weight in it. These are early Precambrian trilobites, and trilobites are like a ocean dwelling bottom of the sea creature um that's got like three here i'll throw in some photos of trilobites uh or well <laughs> are not photos artist renderings of trilobites they didn't have cameras back then um and uh they're around for like 300 million years and there's a whole bunch of different types of them even though it's like basically didn't evolve a whole lot and they molted uh, so a lot of what you see here, what we're finding, it's like they're malted shells that then were like filled in with sediment. Is that correct? That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, and of course you can find, uh, like full size, bigger ones here, I guess up to an inch and a half, but that's rare. A lot of them are teeny tiny, like half inches, quarter inches. Um, definitely, uh, you want... These things, some knee pads and a uh, little pick and a butter knife and gloves. And of course, this is definitely a summer only location. Thompson Pass gets closed all winter. And well, I guarantee you that in the winter, there's what, at least five feet of snow here. At least five feet of snow up here. So this area is buried. There's a number, there's a number of things here that kind of give 
the idea that you might have something and they don't. Like that right there. That's certainly the trilobite shape, but well, the trilobite's missing. I mean, it could be a trilobite or part of one, but clearly there's better impressions of them. So yeah. why bother? So because it was raining earlier, I think the plan is I'm going to fill up this tote with uh, some of the type of type of material that we've had good luck with finding some decent little samples that are already in the bucket. In case we can't come back in the morning, we have a bunch of material that we can take home and uh, dry out. I'll be taking samplings along the way. And hopefully there's some good stuff in here. It's interesting how the material changes. Down there, it's more uh, crumbly and flaky, and we get more and more solid material as you work your way up by the bend in the road. But I think uh, the plan of loading up this bin will certainly give us some winter projects of uh, splitting it, and maybe it'll be a little nicer when it's dried out. The material, it well, has been raining, so the material is holding some water, which makes it extra flaky, which isn't always what you want. It's starting to get dark. We're calling it for right now. Maybe for good, we'll see. Like is amped up and wants to play. We got some good material that you can obviously see them. Don't worry, <laughs> I'm gonna take some close up video and photos of those. We got a bunch of material that we can take home and work if we can't come back in the morning. It's been drizzling. That's that. I will, however, show you the campground that's close by so that if you want to come here, uh, you can have an idea as to what your, uh, what the accommodations are nearby. And when I say nearby, what would you say within it's like four miles. I'll put the I'll put. Than that, probably two miles. Yeah, two miles or so. I'll put I'll put it in the video. Right down there is a beaver dam. Kind of broken through. Uh, Gaia lists this location as being a quarry, and it kind of looks like well, the hillside there they quarried it out and made this nice road coming into the West Fork. Fish Trap Creek campground here. Here's Fish Trap Creek. Campground is right up there. Doesn't really look like there's much. I don't see anything moving. Yeah. Also, doesn't really look like there's much of interest in this creek rock wise. It is super pretty here though. So you can stay here at this campground for 16 days. 16 consecutive days. It seems pretty nice. There is a bear bin. It is grizzly country here. Nothing in it. And it's free. Did I say that? It's free. This is our camping setup. This is what makes the rock show happen. Dispersed camping and well, sleeping in the car. I've shown this before, but I always, every time I show it, people are interested. Uh, I pulled out the back seat out of the Subaru, built a platform, and some nice thick pads, sleep bags, window covers, bug nets on the windows, your basic minimalist stuff, little table, some chairs, and uh, the, the DIY awning. We got some sprinkling going on. Anyways, I will catch you guys back in the shop. We'll look at some little tiny trilobites. I'll show you what we have. So this is the good stuff and how I packed it to uh, bring it home. Wrapped it in paper towels. Basically all of the paper towels that we had with us. Put it in a Ziploc. Wrapped it up in a pair of pants. Put it in a bucket. Hopefully, I haven't looked at them yet. Hopefully they made it back. They're not broken up. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. Um, so, uh, Roadside Geology of Montana, okay? Here, on page, where are we at? 96, you can see they mention 
the trilobite. Oh, well, the fingers all gross. Uh, you can see they mentioned the triobites and the shale formation and the size of that shale formation. So somebody that really wanted to go out and hunt trilobites, I strongly, strongly suggest you have more time out there, dry weather, than we did. Uh, because after the night camping out there, it dumped. It flat poured for hours and hours and hours in the middle of the night, turning everything into mud. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Strongly recommend these books. Um, if you have the older one, right, these older roadside geology books, some states they have updated ones. The updated ones are a million times better. Get the updated roadside geologies. I'm going to unpack this now and uh, wish me luck that it didn't turn to dust. These are the good ones that were packed up. Here is a whole bin of additional pieces of shale that we can go through over the winter as kind of a fun project. Let's look at some of the stuff here. There you can see a fossil. Now, a couple of things. There are other things, non-trilobites out there. There's brachiopods, other, other stuff. Now, these guys are little. But it's fascinating to think about the seafloor being essentially covered with these guys and roaming the bottom of the ocean for hundreds of millions of years. And now they're out here in my shop. Well, the fossils of them or their uh, maltings. This one that Sarah picked up is really, really good. I like that one a lot. Um, there's some other little impressions. So, uh, I would absolutely go back there. Um, it is a spot that I enjoyed, and uh, I would definitely do some more exploring of the area. 100%. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it to be useful and informative. Uh, and maybe you also like that little tour of the campground <laughs> and our kind of adventure setup. So if you did like that, please um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and by all means, if you have the capability or interest in sharing this video with other people, it really helps me to spread the word about this YouTube channel and try to grow it. So uh, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good day, everybody.